Good morning. Welcome to our Bible study this morning. This morning we'll be continuing to look at Romans 12, 1 and 2. Keep in mind, in Romans 12, 1 and 2, the Bible is helping us to see a very important key to becoming the proper example for others. That key is in our attitude. Our attitude about this whole thing. If you remember in our previously in our study, we've seen that by following the example Christ has set, we will automatically set the example for others. So what attitudes should we have within us as we seek to follow Christ and in that way then be the proper example for others? Let's look at Romans 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, we looked at that last time, <clears throat> that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable to God. Let's stop with a living sacrifice. Folks, what should our attitude be in all of this? We should be willing to give our all. We should be willing to, to honestly be a living sacrifice. Stop thinking about in the Old Testament what it was like when the animals were sacrificed to the Lord. They weren't a living sacrifice. They were a dead sacrifice, weren't they? Because they would, sl in most cases, when it came to these offerings, they would slit the animal's throat first and the blood would be shed. Then they would burn uh, many of the remaining portions on the altar. And that fire then would consume the animal and it would ascend to heaven in the smoke. That's just in general how a sacrifice was done in the Old Testament. That was a dead sacrifice. When we talk about a Christian being a sacrifice for Christ, we're not necessarily saying every Christian has to physically die like the animals in the Old Testament and then be given to Christ. It's saying the opposite. It's saying a Christian can be given to Christ just like the Old Testament animals, except they can continue to live as they are being given to Christ. So instead of us yielding up our life and saying, Lord, I'm willing to die for you, and then somebody slits our throat, we shed our blood, and then we are now giving ourselves to Christ, we are saying, Lord, as I live my life on earth, my life is just as much yours as if somebody had slit my throat and taken my life and given it to you as the Old Testament animals were done. It's emptying ourselves of our right over ourselves. Because if you think about it, we really don't have a right over ourselves. Stop and think about it. Many of us today, I mean, myself included, I catch myself all the time thinking this way. This is my life. I can live it the way I want to. <laughs> you know, if I stop and think about how silly that is. First of all, is this really my life? I don't think so. The only reason why I have this life is because the Lord created me in the beginning and he continues to sustain my life on a daily basis. So for me to think the life I have within myself is my life, first of all, I'm joking myself. It's not my life. It's the Lord's life. He gave it and he sustains it. So instead, I need to recognize, Lord, the life I have within me today is only because of you. You've given it to me. And you've sustained it within me all these years. It's yours. You've been gracious enough to allow me to enjoy the benefits of it. But it's your life. So Lord, because I recognize this life is your life, I'm going to use it in whatever way you want me to use it. If you want me to spend the rest of my days as a missionary on a foreign field, so be it. It's your life. You can do with it what you want. If you want me to minister to my neighbors and that's how you want me to live the rest of my life, so be it. I'll minister to my neighbors when the opportunity arises. Lord, whatever you have me to do, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. If you put me in the hospital, and if it's because you know a lost person is going to be in that hospital that needs witnessing. And so you, you have some health issue come my way where I have to go to the hospital. So be it. I'm going to try to be the best witness I can while I'm in that hospital. To meet the needs of those who need you. 
See, that's all a part of the proper attitude we should have. It's recognizing our life is not our own. So when we follow Christ's example, we're not having our life taken from us. That we should be able to live ourselves, but no, now we have to live for Christ. Just the opposite. It's, Lord, this is what my life is all about. You gave me this life to start with so that I might serve you. And this is my way now of doing simply what you want me to do. This is, this is a privilege for me to give back to you this life that you have blessed me with. Folks, that's a wonderful attitude for each Christian to have, to recognize our life is not our own. The Lord has simply blessed us with using this life on earth, but really it's His. Therefore, however He wants us to use this life, it's His to say. It's not really ours. That's what it means to be in submission to His Lordship, recognizing He truly is the one with authority over us. He's our King. And he's our Lord.